Currently, the San Francisco Giants have the best record in baseball at 67 and 39. Probably one of the biggest surprises this season, how the Giants are having so much success. We got a couple months left of the season. So today I'm going to break down why the San Francisco Giants are having so much success. What's up guys, it's Tom here. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Giants and why they're having so much success and also where I see them ending up this season. Let's not waste any time and get into it. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more MLB content just like this. This is why the Giants are the best team in baseball. They hit home runs, they have good pitching. Guys like Buster Posey and Brandon Crawford are having career years and they're getting some help from guys such as Darren Ruff, Lamonte Wade Jr. and Steven Duggar. We'll start with the hitting side of things for the Giants. The Giants are seventh in on-base percentage with a 328 on-base percentage. They have the fourth highest walk rate at a 10.1% walk rate. They currently have the second most home runs in the league, but I believe they just jumped ahead of the Toronto Blue Jays. They are one shy of being in first place. And after last night's performance against the Diamondbacks, I saw a couple jacks down there in Arizona. Let's take a look at the F4 leaders for the Giants for their hitters. You have Buster Posey with a 3.6 F4, Brandon Crawford with a 3.5, Steven Duggar with a 2.0, and Darren Ruff with a 1.9 F4. So clearly Buster Posey and Brandon Crawford are carrying that offense right now. Buster Posey sat out in the 2020 season. He has 13 home runs right now. It's the first time he's had double digit home runs since 2017 and is having a great year. His triple slash line is looking like this. 329 average, 421 on base percentage, and 543 slugging percentage for an OPS of 964. Currently, Buster Posey is flirting with having a thousand OPS, and if someone told you that at the beginning of the year, you would have thought they were crazy. He has a 13.3 walk rate. That is the top 10 percentile in the league. He has a 161 WRC plus, and as always has that veteran leadership behind the dish and leading that rotation. Moving on to Brandon Crawford. He has had a surge in power this year. He has 18 home runs through 86 games, and I think he'll surpass his career high of 21 home runs which was back in 2015. Brandon Crawford has a career high OPS at 911 this year. I think this is by far his best offensive season he's had. He's never finished above an 800 OPS in his career and he also currently has a 140 WRC plus and he has never been above 113. And as always Crawford has that elite defense great glove over there at shortstop and it is shown by the 11th best outs above average with eight. Now we're going to move to the depth of the Giants lineup. They currently have eight guys with double digit home runs in their lineup. We'll start with Darren Ruff playing first base and some outfield signed with the Giants before the 2020 season. Currently he has 12 home runs, 159 WRC plus, 974 OPS and a 15.7 walk rate. You're going to see a theme here with the Giants. They are very disciplined at the plate. Moving on to Lamonte Wade Jr. who also plays first base and some outfield. He was acquired in a trade this past offseason with the Minnesota Twins. Right now, he has 13 home runs, 141 WRC plus, 908 OPS, and a 10.2 walk rate. The last guy I want to mention is their center fielder, Steven Duggar. He is a homegrown prospect, came up in the Giants system. Currently, he has seven home runs a 124 WRC plus 825 OPS and is great in the outfield. Let's move over to the pitching now, the rotation and staff the Giants have. They are third in ERA with a 3.36 team ERA. They don't strike a lot of people out, but that's okay because they have the best walk rate in the league at a 7.1% walk rate. They have the best whip in the league at a 1.12 whip. and they are third in batting average against with a 220 batting average against. So the Giants don't give up any freebies and they don't give up many hits. So that is a great combination, a great recipe for success. And the Giants have proven that. Their F4 leaders for pitchers are Gosman with a 3.0 F4, Sclafani with a 2.0 F4, and Jake McGee with a 1.0 war. And that is the highest in the pen. We'll start with their ace, Kevin Gosman, who took the qualifying offer by the Giants this offseason. He has a 
2.35 ERA, 3.01 FIP, 30% strikeout rate. That is electric. That is great for your starting pitcher and ace and a 178 batting average against. He throws a fastball 50% of the time, splitter 36% of the time. So he is a fastball splitter guy and his splitter is devastating. One of the best pitches in baseball right now. He has a negative 19 run value on his splitter, which is the third best in major league baseball. A hundred strikeouts with his splitter and a 109 batting average against on his splitter. So guys aren't having much success against Kevin Gosman's splitter. Moving on to Anthony DeSclafani, the steal for the Giants. They signed him this past offseason, a former red, but now he is doing work for the Giants. He is a fastball sinker slider guy. He has increased his usage of his slider and decreased his usage of his four seam fastball from 2019. And he is having success because of that. A 3.1 ERA, 3.61 FIP, 1.04 whip, and a 210 batting average against. Now the Giants have great depth. All their starting pitchers that eat most of their innings have a ERA of 3.8 or below. Alex Wood and Johnny Cueto, I think, have a ERA of right at 3.84, somewhere around there. But still, for the back end of your rotation to have a ERA of sub four, that is awesome. Moving to the pen, the workhorses of their pen are Jake McGee and Tyler Rogers. We'll start with Jake McGee, a former Dodger and now a Giant. He was signed this past offseason. He is a fastball slider guy. He uses his fastball just about 90% of the time and his slider that rest of the 10% of the time. But it's been working for him even when guys know what's coming. A 2.23 ERA, 3.04 FIP, 27.6 K rate and a batting average against of 167. Up next, we have Tyler Rogers, the master of weak contact. Submarine guy all the way from down below his knuckles scrape in the ground, you know what I'm saying? Barrel percent is best in the league, has a 1.3 barrel percent. He's given up only two barreled balls this year, uh, which is incredible for the amount of innings that he's pitched in relief. His slider just kind of rises sometimes, cuts across, super uncomfortable at bat for all the hitters, and that's why he's getting all this weak contact. Top 4% in the league for average exit velo, 85.1 miles per hour, and he has a ground ball rate of 63.2 percent so getting all these ground balls for brandon crawford to field and sling over to first and late inning situations for the giants he has a 1.98 era 3.38 fip and a 4.5 walk rate so he has excellent command as well on top of all the success that the giants were having at the deadline they added chris bryant now this guy i think is going to be an x factor for the giants boosting their offense even more and hopefully hitting more home runs as well. This season, he has a 267 average, 19 home runs, 866 OPS, and a 132 WRC+. His walk rate is up and his K rate is down from 2020, so that is great to see being more disciplined at the plate. On top of all this offense that the Giants are getting, they're getting versatility in the field as well. Bryant can play third base while Evan Longoria is out, and also he can play the outfield as well. So regardless of where Chris Bryant plays, he's going to make an impact for the Giants the rest of the season. We just looked at why the Giants are having so much success up to this point. Hopefully they can continue the success going forward, but now I'm going to talk about where I see them ending up at the end of the season. Call me crazy, but I think they are going to win the division and end up facing the Dodgers either in the NLDS or NLCS. I think the Potters are going to start slipping out of this three-headed race for the division. I mean, we don't know how long Tatis is out or how serious his injury is, and that is definitely devastating for the Padres if he is out. So I could see the Padres and Dodgers matching up in a wild card game. I think the Dodgers are going to win that, and then they move on eventually to face the Giants in the postseason, and that is going to be some epic must-watch postseason baseball, which we all want. So for my prediction, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Giants are gonna run away with this thing. It's definitely going to be tough, though, with the Dodgers now getting Max Scherzer and Trey Turner. 
but I'm gonna stick to my gut feeling and go with the Giants for the rest of the year. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are about the Giants and Giants fans. Let me know how happy you are to get Chris Bryant and let me know how you guys think you're gonna do this year. I already know you're gonna say you're gonna win the World Series and that's what I wanna hear down below in the comments. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel as well. That way you don't miss this kind of epic MLB content. With that being said, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.